Hey YouTubers, D Doc here. Well, I got a surprise behind me. Got my tax money back and it was enough for me to purchase a camper. And a 1978 Apache Ranger. For a 40 year old camper, it's in fairly good shape. Yeah, a little crack there on the window. It's been taped up by the previous owner. Don't mind the purple tape. There was some old white duct tape there. I replaced it. It's got some issues with it. It is a 40 year old camper. But it's in really, really good shape. A Ranger. They told me all the issues that they had with it. And I've cleaned the outside and the inside a bit. I have to pop it down to wash the top. Of course, I haven't washed the back panel or the front panel, but I did all the pop-up parts. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see this, but this morning I took the rear lift mechanism off, took it apart, re-greased it, Owners I bought it from replaced the seals that go in the side panels because it had leaked. For most of its life, it's been in a garage. And the only real major part that I saw that I had to work on last night was the front lift mechanism. Right there where you see that piece of a pop can and bracket above it was a big hole that was making the eccentric lobe in the lift mechanism not work real properly. So I patched it up, used that piece of a pop can to patch over a hole and while I had that off last night, I re-greased it and lubed it up, put it back on this morning and then did the back one. So I'm hoping it'll work a little bit better. Got an old style propane tank. Fortunately, I've got a spare new style propane tank. So I'll put that on. A few things, had to put a little piece of trim here. This is just the extra I had to cut off of that front one. I just popped it there for a second. I'll have to replace, find me another piece of trim here to close that in a little better. Well, let's walk around and take a look on the inside. An Apache Ranger. I put some new leveling gadgets on it so it's easier to level it up. And we're looking inside the door. Right over here, guy who owned it two times ago, two owners ago, put in an electric fridge. Now it only works on electric. It doesn't work on 12 volt battery power or propane but that's okay. If I'm not gonna use electricity, I'll just take a cooler and some ice and maybe throw some blocks of ice in there to keep things cool. Immediately across from the door is the kitchenette. A three burner stove, which is a luxury. A heater. The heater works, the stove works, the refrigerator works. And over there under the sink, looks like somebody popped in a newer style 
it's not newer anymore but an air conditioner and it works too so off to the right we have the front bed there's a little bit of storage underneath this counter right up towards the back oh a little bit of storage right there underneath the heater not a whole lot we swing to the left we've got the table that will plop down and make a bed now they say this unit will sleep six and I'm telling you you're gonna live kind of comfortably so this bed here would probably be two kids I suppose if you got a really skinny one who doesn't move around a bunch they can sleep on this bench that's my crank handle there we're cranking it up underneath this bench a bit of storage this side of it doesn't pop up but there's an oh yeah it does cool and there's an access door to the outside and that's where we store all the poles and the crank handle and any other thing a guy wants to of course underneath the seats there's storage underneath both seats and what I'm going to end up doing is getting some plastic totes I'll have to measure them for fit put them in there and I can whatever I store in there I can use put in the tote bag here's the back bed they kind of claim it as a queen size bed I would say maybe it's more the size of a full bed just purchased me one of these fold up chairs from Harbor Freight with a little table on it and about the only problem there's if you look hard enough you can see some water stainage across the back and what they said was there's seals that go up over these side pieces and they get old and they wear out and leak but they had replaced the seals a couple of years ago so this water staining is from before and there's no mildew or rot it's just the staining but someday I'm going to eventually replace all this paneling and uh, make it a little bit better nice big windows up here in the roof we have a 12 volt light and a 12 volt fan there's a plug-in right there on the roof to operate the fan and the light and of course down here on the power unit got a plug in here a little safety shut off or button for the AC or uh, for the battery reset button here and this little switch here you push it over this way if we're running off the battery 12 volt battery when you're transporting the vehicle shut it to off or if you're going to plug into electricity plug it over this way for converter and then that converts the electricity to 12 volt current so you can run the overhead fan and the light without burning out the bulbs as a little bit of water staining up here in the front section too because the seals had leaked and I was very lucky the people I bought it from had some leftover seals so they threw them in one of the storage compartments and let me bring them home the only big issue I see with these units is up here in the four corners there's some air gaps so I took some new clean red shop rags stuffed them in the holes you know I don't want flies getting in here and the same can be said down here in the four bottom corners of the slide outs 
can't really see that one but over there you can see a little bit of the rag sticking out and that's to plug off any uh, fly access I'm real impressed with this unit paid a good price for it the folks I bought it from were real honest with me told me of all the defects they knew of oh one other defect here at the door I'm gonna to have to get some weather stripping you can see it's kind of old non-existent so I'll have to get some weather stripping over at the hardware store tomorrow put it around the door frame maybe a little around the door so that when I close the door it'll seal it up a little better you can see a little bit of daylight there over here some daylight but I'll get some weather stripping put some on the door some on the trim and that'll seal that up keep them buggies out I'm real happy with this I think it'll come in handy Whoop. I do a lot of motorcycle camping over the summer where team up with my oldest brother we ride out on the motorcycles go to some camping events of course we pack everything we need on the motorcycles <clears throat> And you can't carry a whole lot on the motorcycles, tent, sleeping bag, clothes, a uh, quad chair, whatnot. But you can't take any food with you. We're just riding the motorcycles. We don't have those pull behind cargo trailers or anything. But one of my camping outfits is a family oriented camp out. And it's a chance for the group to bring their kids, grandkids, out to the state park we go to and then we can have families camp together kids can play together and whatnot and being that as it may half the people bring their regular camping trailers and uh camp in those trailers the rest of us that didn't have camping trailers of any sort would just take our tents last year we had an f3 tornado breeze right by the state park and hit the small town a half a mile away just knocked over a bunch of trees, caused some damage. We didn't have uh, too much damage in the park. Uh, four of the tenters' tents got flattened by the straight line winds. Mine didn't. But I was in the birthing position on my mattress with my two legs out, up and spread out, holding two of the corner posts from collapsing in. But uh, we did all right. But I thought, well, got this tax money coming. Why not look for a little camper? Ideally, I wanted a slide-in truck camper that I could slide in the back of the, uh, my truck. And then I could pull the motorcycle on my motorcycle trailer. But as luck would have it, I didn't have the money when they came up for sale on Craigslist and other venues. And uh, the ones I could afford, and uh, they got sold. And then by the time I got my tax return money, there weren't any more units available. So I went for second best and got the pop-up. Actually, it's called a fold-down in Apache camper terms. And I think I'll be okay with it. It's just the one camp out that I'll be taking the camper to and pull it. And uh, I'm gonna try to load the motorcycle in the back of the truck pretty sure that what I'm going to have to do is buy an extender hitch to hook onto the back of the truck because as we all know there just isn't a whole lot of room when you hook the hitch up to the back of the truck and I'm going to have to push the, full, the uh, tailgate down to get the motorcycle in and with the tailgate down there's not enough room to turn very much of a corner here so I'll just go get me an extender hitch and uh, that'll stick the hitch out another 18 inches or so and that should give me a lot of clearance with the tailgate down to have the motorcycle in the back of the truck and be able to make some good turns on the trailer. So there we have it. 
by 1978 Apache Ranger fold down camper. There's quite a quite a lot of enthusiasm for these style campers. A lot of forums. It's easy to get parts. Now those crank up mechanisms, I did look those up. Those are $175 a piece or $300 for the pair, front and rear. And uh, they're out of stock. So I repaired that front one. It works good. Reconditioned the back one, it works good. Shouldn't have any issues. Well, there we have it. There are a couple of days now. I'll uh, pop this down, wash the top side, wash the back side, the front side, get it all nice and clean. And then uh, about the only issue I've got with it was I went over to transfer the title to a Iowa title and get some plates on it. And when they went ran the numbers through, they said the VIN number on the Nebraska title didn't match for this camper. They weren't real specific about it, so they referred me to the Iowa Department of Transportation Inspection and Investigation Division. And in a couple weeks here, I'll have to pull the trailer down with the title, uh, bill of sale, and there's a sticker underneath the sink with all the official numbers. So I took a picture of that and I'll have to go let the investigator look at it and then they'll decide if they're going to issue a new VIN number or just go with the established VIN number. And we'll see. I'm hopeful that it'll work out okay. This is a nice camper and I'm really looking forward to using this. I'm not just going to use it the once over the summer. I'll use it several times over the summer. I'll just go on little camp outs by myself. Don't necessarily need to take a motorcycle because with the pop-up camper, I can set up camp <clears throat> and I can use the truck to go get any supplies. So, real nice camper, 1978 Apache Ranger fold-down camper. I think I'll like it. Thanks for watching and commenting. Catch you on the next one.